Hello and welcome back to Sex, Brains and Money. I am your host, Nikki Thomas, at the Autism Art Auction. You can hear the claps are getting a little bit louder as more and more people show up, but uh, right now I'm going to speak to our second guest of the day, Anderson Todd, who is an enrichment educator. Hi, Anderson. How are you? Hi, I'm well. Thanks for having me on again, Nikki. Thank you for being here again. As uh, some of you may remember, we had Anderson on a previous episode back in September, I think it was, which was also Bon Bon's first appearance on the show. <laughs> and she was uh, about three months old and full of beans and could not sit still in my lap. And Anderson, you didn't see this on the, on the segment, but he was taking care of her and doing a very good job of keeping her quiet during the other segments. Anyways, Anderson has joined us today because some of his research involves neurofeedback as a means of helping people with autism. But why don't you start out by telling us what neurofeedback is and what the term even means. Right. Okay. So um, neurofeedback is a, is a kind of subset of, of biofeedback. Mm -hmm. So if you want to think about biofeedback processes generally, okay, anything that your body is doing, it requires some kind of feedback mechanism to guide how well it's performing. So think about riding a bicycle, for mm -hmm. instance, right? If you're riding a bicycle and you start to tip over, your inner ear is designed to give you some uh, feedback to your brain that tells you that you're going off to one side or another, right? And this is how you learn how to stay on balance. Mm -hmm. Biofeedback processes basically take um, processes that are within our body, okay, and do measurements on them, run them into a computer so that we have some external way of knowing uh, when we're off balance in some way or another. And so neurofeedback, essentially speaking, is using EEG technology, right, measuring brain waves, uh, and feeding that into a computer in such a way as that we can, you know, tell when we are in uh, one state of consciousness or another. The technology was originally developed in the 1960s, but uh, as computers have gotten quite a bit more powerful, we've been able to feed EEG settings into computer games. And so the technology that we use now largely revolves around sort of feeding brain states into computer games. You play the computer games, but in order to do well at them, you have to get your brain into a particular range that we can set within the software. Hmm. Um, and so it's basically a way of training your brain how to enter those states at will and with video games. Everybody loves video games. Everyone loves video games. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so how does that apply to helping people with autism? How does that, how is that applicable to uh, therapeutic mechanisms and things along those lines? Right. Uh, well, most of the early um, implementations of this technology, including uh, the one that I run, I've been running a lab in a private school for about two years, mm -hmm. um, have focused on ADHD. Um, and so tuning people to this sort of state between um, being overexcited and being sort of distracted and out of it. Mm -hmm. Most of the autism-based research that's started to come in with people on the spectrum uh, has been on looking at sort of front-to-back uh, connectivity profiles. So people with autism, typically speaking, show um, a kind of unusually high degree of connectivity in their frontal lobes, but they don't show good connectivity to the back, and so they get sort of unusual firing, right? Um, so most of the research is focused on trying to level that out and when it goes into sort of abnormal ranges you can train people to come back. In fact they found that uh, autism uh, spectrum groups do really really well with this research uh, because they so often have this sort of technical affinity they're so interested in sort of technical stuff in games uh, that they can focus in on this stuff and like a study that they did in 2007 a uh, hundred percent of the uh, group tested showed a significantly positive response. I think it was 83 candidates. Wow. Uh, they all showed really substantial uh, increases in different kinds of social performance and so on and so forth. Um, uh, and sort of regardless of the severity of their symptoms. So it's it's really starting to shape up as a kind of new, um, very impressive form of treatment that seems to outstrip a lot of the other categories, pharmacological and what have you. Well, that's amazing. It sounds like there's a lot of um research that's being done that now focuses on the neurological instead of just the behavioral as it was in the past and it's good that technolo technology is allowing us to get further and further along that way. Yeah, it's a, it's a really remarkable technology and, and I mean like I said it plays really well. It's kind of a form of treatment that um, in, in my experience working with kids mm -hmm. they respond to uh, because it doesn't feel like treatment at all. Uh, it feels like they get to play video games for half an hour a day. <laughs> so the school that we've implemented it at, the kids have really jumped at it and we have um, quite a few kids on the spectrum. Now we haven't been testing them with um, sort of autism specific protocols, mm -hmm. but we really have noticed uh, improvements in their attention, their ability to kind of sit still in class, and um, they're not nearly as disruptive mm. um, in many cases. So 
yeah, we're, we're seriously considering implementing some of these uh, spectrum-specific um, protocols with it. But yeah, it's, it's a remarkable technology. Well, that's great. Well, thank you for sharing all that with us. It sounds like it's pretty amazing research. And if people want to know more about it, they can contact Anderson. I believe his email is available to anyone who watched the segment. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. OK, so we're going to take another break. And we are going to come back after showing some more of the pictures that have been donated to our auction. And uh, this is Sex Brains Money. I'm Nikki Thomas. This is Anderson Todd. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah.